Hello and welcome to Newsfeed, your daily dose of what people are talking about online, from news stories to what's trending. Now, TikTok is on a public relations crusade to convince Western governments and the public that it's a safe platform. It may be one of the most popular social media apps in the U.S., but the Senate is mulling a bill that would give the Biden administration the power to ban TikTok nationwide. The U.S., Canada and the EU have already banned use of the Chinese app on government-issued phones amid alleged data privacy violations and concerns user data is being fed to the Chinese government. Enter Project Texas and Project Clover. The two initiatives are part of TikTok's massive PR charm offensive to convince the U.S. and Europe that the platform poses no national security threat. Under the newly announced Project Clover, European user data will be stored in servers in Ireland and Norway at a cost of $1.3 billion annually. The move aims to assure EU regulators that Europeans' data is out of the Chinese government's reach. Back in 2020, TikTok carried out a similar initiative by moving American data to Oracle's servers in a bid to assuage U.S. authorities. Yet, three years on, American lawmakers still aren't convinced that TikTok is safe. Sare has more on the controversy. A favorite for the younger generation, but a worry for governments. TikTok is facing increasing scrutiny in the West over whether it's a risk to national security. We've been very clear that TikTok, uh, you know, poses a problem and an issue. And so we have concerns about that as it relates to Americans' data, collecting Americans' data, and the potential national uh, security risk. The U.S. has long been suspicious of TikTok. While former President Donald Trump may have been unsuccessful in his attempts to ban the app in 2020, we're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. It looks like the administration of his successor, Joe Biden, may achieve just that. President White. This bill is called the Restrict Act. It specifically gives the Department of Commerce more power to take action against technology companies that are based in certain countries the United States considers foreign adversaries. Number one on that list, China. And because TikTok's parent company is Chinese-based ByteDance, TikTok falls into this category. If the bill is passed, the Commerce Department would have more power to investigate a foreign company and deem whether its services pose a national security threat, especially if those services are information, communication, and technology products. Then the president would have the full power to act on that threat, which could mean a ban. TikTok's charm offensive comes after more than half the states in America banned the app on government devices. Only last month, its neighbor, Canada, did the same. Project Clover's target, the EU, also banned TikTok on staff phones in its main institutions. Previously, India and Taiwan banned TikTok over cybersecurity concerns in 2020 and 2022, respectively. Beijing's response to all of this? How unsure of itself can the U.S. be to fear a young people's favorite app to such a degree? The U.S. has been overstretching the concept of national security and abusing state power to suppress other countries' companies. While China's denial may be predictable, concerns about data security at TikTok aren't unfounded. The app collects an extensive amount of information from its users. Personal details, approximate location, IP addresses and device type, what the user does while they're on the app, and information on linked social media accounts are all standard data most platforms get from their users. What's concerning about TikTok's case is that depending on the permissions given, it can access your exact location and data from other apps on your phone, such as messages and whatever you've copied on your clipboard. Beijing-based parent company ByteDance is obliged to hand over any personal data connected to national security to Chinese authorities. Meanwhile, officials in Washington have been investigating the extent to which ByteDance cooperates with Beijing. And last year, a TikTok executive had to address concerns on the Senate floor. We do have employees based in China. We also have very strict access controls around the type of data that they can access and where that data is stored, which is here in the United States. And we've also said under no circumstances would we give that data to China. Despite what their politicians might think, avid TikTokers in America want the app to stay. 
Like, let me share my information with China if I want to. Like, I literally could care less. While some believe this isn't simply about their security. The U.S. is simply trying to block its biggest competitor. TikTok has transformed how the world consumes social media and is now more popular than both Facebook and Instagram. The average user spends 29 minutes a day on Instagram, but TikTok users spend it over 90 minutes a day on the app. While the fate of America's most popular social media app is still uncertain, a potential ban would have lasting implications on both popular culture and already strained relations between Washington and Beijing. Robert Potter is the co-founder of Internet 2.0, a data protection company that extensively examines TikTok. We asked him if the U.S. and other governments are justified in their probe against TikTok. Both the 2014 counterintelligence law and the 2017 national intelligence law require Chinese companies to collaborate with the goals and objectives of Chinese intelligence and to not share that information uh, with the host country. So if you're working in a government role, that statement in and of itself is problematic for government employees to be using it. It's up to individual users with lower risks thresholds to make their own decision. Uh, but at the government level, that's, that's a risk they can't accept. Uh, so then there's the application level concerns where TikTok collects a significant amount of personal data. It requires access to clipboard. It can do keystroke logging. It can do facial recognition. It can do voice recognition. It can do body language recognition. It does trend analysis on uh, what you're looking at. It does. It has access to your location. Uh, it has access to your GPS, your device ID, and it makes it very clear both in the code base uh, and in the privacy policies that you as a user are giving it permission to do this. So while those statements are inconsistent with the public affairs of TikTok, uh, the reality is, is that the privacy policies that users sign up to is pre pretty explicit. And when asked about the credibility of the platform, Robert said it's at best questionable. TikTok can say that they won't comply with the Chinese government, but they've already got you as the user to agree that if they do that, that that's okay. Um, the reality is that there is a significant crackdown going on against tech, against uh, tech companies in China. The founder of ByteDance was pushed out as part of this crackdown. He was pretty pro-China. He specifically said that he wanted his platforms to reflect authentic socialist values and even public statements about pushing Chinese values online were not sufficient to save his head. So if the founder of the company cannot resist the influence of the Chinese state, I think it's you've got to take it with a bar of soap and have very significant questions as to the credibility of the public affairs team saying that they can resist China's influence when the founder billionaire of the company couldn't. Alrighty, on to what's trending. One of the beautiful things about language is that it's always evolving. Words take on new meaning or are merged into other words to form new terms that reflect the day and societies we live in. Language is really a true reflection of the zeitgeist. Well, Dictionary.com has just added or updated over 1,500 words to its lexicon. Some you may already know, others have been controversial, such as the added meaning that woke has taken on. But Dictionary.com insists the new terms and updates are simply reflecting how culture is changing. Take cakeism, for example. This is a belief that you can enjoy the benefits of two or have it both ways. Put it simply, have your cake and eat it. You may have noticed that posting entertaining photos of cats, dogs, or other pets usually grabs attention. So from influencer, we get petfluencer for those showing off their furry or feathered friends. Now in this gender fluid world, we're moving away from strict male slash female gender specifics. So to describe people of Latin American origin or descent, Latino or Latina became simply Latin. And if you find these new definitions and words all too much in a world gone mad, don't go find someone to rage at, especially if they're unprepared. Why? Because you'd be trauma dumping. And staying with the new, here's something you don't see every day. Movie stars inspiring science. Tell them. 
Tell them all. Whoever comes, whoever it is, I'll kill them. I'll kill them all. That's actor Keanu Reeves as John Wick, yet another one of Reeves' on-screen roles famous for ruthlessly killing villains. And German scientists were so inspired by Reeves' assassin movie roles that they've named a bacteria after him. Canumycins are a newly discovered bacteria that, like their namesake, are insanely good at killing fungi. The human Keanu weighed in after hearing about the, um, I mean, honor, I guess you can call it that, calling it surreal, and thanked the scientist people. At a time when fungi are becoming increasingly resistant to known antifungals, German researchers have discovered three natural compounds that are effective in killing fungi. These compounds named kenomycins are named after the wholesome action hero Keanu Reeves. The compounds were found to be effective against various plant fungal diseases and are derived from bacteria called lipopeptides. The compounds could provide a nature-friendly alternative to pesticides and could also offer a much-needed treatment for human fungal infections. All right, this next trend is a little bit of a mess, and I mean this quite literally. It's called clutter core. It refers to home decor. Think maximalist interiors. My room in the daytime. It's about excess, creative chaos, mismatched stuff, a more eclectic, cluttered approach. The trend took off during the pandemic, but has seen a resurgence this year. Cluttered Core's comeback is pretty fitting for 2023. There's been a focus on authenticity online. Facetune selfies aren't really doing it now. It's time to be real. Keep on celebrities have been sharing clips of their messy homes. Even decluttering Queen Marie Kondo has admitted that after becoming a mom, tidying up is no longer a priority. It's 2023 and Clutter Core celebrates mess. Meet maximalism's aesthetic cousin, Clutter Core. Imagine a mixture of dark academia meets semi-hoarding. It might be a minimalist worst nightmare, but some say it's just an organized mess. Described as feeling like a warm and cozy antique shop, it's all about proudly displaying your favorite things in a loud, unapologetic way. What do you think about this aesthetic? <laughs> I'm sorry, but minimalism is for hot rich people, okay? I'm broke. I need stuff. Having things is who I am. No flat line. What were you scared about? Maybe sat by and felt the wind. That looks like color of order. Quarters, no boundary ball. I guess more is more in 2023. And that's our show. Find us on YouTube and do subscribe to our channel. Bye and see you soon.